Have you ever wondered how to start tapping into that divine feminine energy? Maybe it's been laying dormant for a while. Maybe you're still not seeing yourself fully as the goddess you are. Have you been trying to change the way that you see yourself but feel like you can't shift your self-concept and view yourself in a way that serves you? That's more authentic to the embodied, empowered, confident version of yourself that you want to be. Today, we're going to talk about how to activate your goddess complex. Making this shift in your self-concept is going to be the thing that gets you everything you want. Remembering that everything starts from source, everything starts from self, the only person to change is self. First, you have to start seeing yourself and remembering yourself as the version of yourself that you truly are. I'm so excited to dive into today's video to get a little bit deeper into self-love, confidence, and seeing yourself as the woman that you truly want to be, and in reality, the woman that you truly already are. But before we get started, I want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. I love Ana Luisa. I've talked about them many times. Majority of the jewelry you see me wearing all the time is from Ana Luisa. It truly is great quality jewelry for an amazing price. I'm very excited to be partnering with them this time in particular because they're having a Valentine's Day sale. But this is not an ordinary Valentine's Day sale. This is a self-love sale, which I feel like is so in line with the topic of today's video. So this season for Valentine's Day, whether you've already manifested your SP, whether you're still working on it, whether you're the version of yourself who's a strong, independent woman, whatever it is, it's time to treat yourself. So until the sale ends, you can get 25% off if you use my link in the description. And let me tell you why, if you're gonna treat yourself, this is the time you should do it. First of all, embodying goddess energy is about many things, but a big part of that is how you show up, how you show up for yourself, how you take care of yourself, how you present yourself, because that does have an effect on your energy. When you look good, you feel good. And a big way that I change up my look, I change up my style, and I help solidify the version of myself I wanna be seen as and I want to see myself as, is by accessorizing, by using my jewelry, using my clothes, using my makeup, my hair to complement the energy that I'm putting off. I like to shine and I like a lot of variety in my jewelry because it's based off my mood. It's based off the parts of me that I want to accentuate in the way that I want to be perceived. Ana Luisa has so many options. It doesn't matter what your style is, what the vibe is that you're going for. You're going to be able to find something that's going to elevate you and fit the look you're going for. Whether you like gold or silver, they have plenty of options for both. For a limited time, you can get 25% off of already very affordable affordable jewelry starting at $39. Literally, what do you have to lose? Treat yourself. The jewelry is amazing quality. You have a two year warranty. If anything ever does happen to it, they've got your back. You've got fast shipping and they ship free in the US. The jewelry is tarnish resistant, great for sensitive skin. I personally have very, very sensitive skin. I've never had issues with Ana Luisa's jewelry. I've never had issues with tarnishing. I've never had issues with anything breaking. I've never had any kind of reactions in my skin. So I love this jewelry. It's so comfortable to wear. A lot of these pieces are becoming my staples. I literally wear this one almost every day. This time I decided to go for some more bracelets. I just love having a cohesive look like it's so dainty but also like it gives you something to look at it gives you some sparkle some oomph to your look I like that they have so many things that are like funky you see it and you're like oh that's funky but also that's cute like nobody else is gonna have that I love these earrings they just feel so sophisticated it feels like she's got something going on and I love a brand that is conscious of their impact on the environment and Ana Luisa is openly and proudly 100% climate neutral which just means that they offset 100% of their carbon emissions. It's always a pleasure to partner with them and I am so excited to do so today. So again, thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Okay, on to the topic at hand. So, okay, I'm so excited. And we're really gonna get down to the nitty gritty today because I want you to leave this video feeling like not only is it possible for you to do this, but like you're already there, like you're already her because you are already her. You're already the woman that you wanna be. You have this goddess lying dormant within you. It's just your job to remember her. It's just your job to choose to see her, to recognize her and to be her again. So you wanna activate your goddess complex. You want to build up your self-concept to be the woman that has it all, who knows that she can be in a loving, healthy relationship with somebody who cares for her, caters to her, provides for her, is tripping over themselves to fulfill her every whim. That is the woman you should be. That it, You deserve nothing less. You deserve nothing less than the best. But when you're coming from a self-concept that says, I'm not valuable, I'm not having favorable experiences in love, nobody supports me, I feel abandoned, I feel like I'm worthless, I feel like I can't see myself in any other light than the one that I've painted myself in, 
or the one that I've been led to believe is true about me from the stories that I've been told from somebody in childhood who told me I was never going to amount to anything or nobody was ever going to love me or maybe somebody abandoned me early on and then that was a cycle that I kept perpetuating until this day. It always happens this way. This has always been my story and it's always going to be my story. I think it's really important to understand that I understand. <laughs> I understand being that victim version of yourself. And I feel like I have a good variety of approaches to reach every person, to meet people where they're at and bring them to the same awareness, to the same knowledge. And obviously evolving is a journey. I don't manifest in the same way that I did when I first started this channel. And if you go back to some of my first videos, I'm sure that I look different, I sound different, I'm presenting myself in a different way. And the information that I'm talking about is different. I'm talking about things in a different way and I'm doing things in a different way because I've learned, I've grown and I've evolved. That wasn't something that happened overnight, but I have had major shifts, quantum leaps that do happen overnight. It wasn't until I saw that possibility being possible for me that I allowed it to happen. It wasn't until I became willing to see myself as I truly was, when I truly understood what seeing myself meant, that I allowed myself to shift and change and rearrange into whatever version I wanted to see myself as. If you are in a state where you still feel like a victim, don't know how this is gonna work, you don't know how you're gonna change, you feel like it's impossible, you're constantly doubting, you're constantly wavering, you don't know where to begin with the mess that's happening, just the messy mess. You just see yourself as this big broken mess. When you look in the mirror and you look at that reflection, the mirror is cracked, the mirror is broken, and you feel like it's beyond repair. I'm gonna tell you right now, first and foremost, that I will not tolerate any more of this story. I could sit here and logically justify to you why you are inherently worthy, why you are valuable, why you are deserving of all of your desires and having anything that you want, but until you are ready to accept that knowledge, until you're ready to truly internalize and integrate this knowledge into your life and into yourself, it's not gonna happen for you. It's not gonna happen by anybody out here telling you something about yourself. It's gonna happen when you start telling yourself that this is the truth. So when I speak about things now in my newfound awareness, when I'm speaking about things and I'm saying that, well, if you're thinking like this or if you're doing these things or if you're acting in this way, you are in a victim state. You are seeing your reality as cause instead of seeing yourself as cause. Some people might think that's harsh. And that's why I wanna preface it by saying, if only you knew, if only you knew the levels of victimhood that I put myself in, that I lived through in my reality, in my experience, you would understand why I'm so clear cut and I have such a strong boundary around me not tolerating you thinking that you're a victim, you thinking that you're not worthy, you thinking that you can't have something because of who you are. It's never because of who you are. It's because of the way that you are being. It's because of the way that you choose to see things. It's because of the awareness that you accept to be true of yourself. It's because of your identity. Always, 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 always. And as human beings, it can be easy to forget because the outside world is very convincing. These stories play on repeat. What does repetition do? It reinforces beliefs. It reinforces assumptions. It makes you think that things are really the way that you are seeing them. Not understanding that the thing would have never been there in the first place if you would not have already made yourself open and allowing, willing for that experience to happen to you. That thing would have never been there in the first place if you didn't see yourself somewhere, somewhere internally, whether it's conscious or subconscious, doesn't really matter. Somewhere there is a belief that what is reflecting in the 3D reality should be there, that it is serving you because it serves to keep your self-concept in alignment with what you are experiencing and living in your day-to-day -day reality. Whether that's a harsh truth for you or not at this point, or whether this is something that you already know and you're saying that you are embodying the new version while still giving victim state excuses, still feeling like there's some cause outside of you, still feeling like there's something that you can't do or some possibility that is inevitable or impossible, you're not really there, are you? And sometimes you have to get that clear cut and that blunt because it is the truth. It always comes down to your identity. It always comes down to who you're being and seeing yourself the way that you truly are, which is that fully unlimited source energy, that infinite intelligence, that expansive energy of the all. And this is why when I made my initial video on self-concept, I approached it in the way that I did because I will always maintain the viewpoint that the ultimate self-concept is I am. Simply those two words, I am. All existence, everything you experience is based on that existence. It's based on your awareness of being, on your consciousness, on literally just your ability to perceive, to be alive, to be aware, to know that, 
hey, something's happening here. I'm a being perceiving things. I'm in a world. I see that thing. I feel this thing. But also, I'm not the person feeling the things. I'm not the physical, tangible manifestation of this body or this human being or this avatar, this ego self. I'm not truly that at my core. Truly at my core, I am that boundless, unlimited consciousness that is all things and nothing at the same time. If you wanna hear me go more into depth about why that is true, why we all are this energy, we all come from this source energy and therefore we all have the same capability to manifest from the realm of infinite possibilities, go watch that video. I'll leave it linked for you in the description if you haven't seen it already. But ultimately it's understanding that before you can do anything else, before you can fix and change and rearrange what's happening on the outside, you have to return to self. You have to have a new way of seeing your true state of being which is that oneness, that allness, the I am. You are that I am. If I didn't have some awareness that I exist, nothing outside of me would exist. This experience is observer-based. So you have to come to that fundamental awareness first, that you are choosing an identity, but you are not the identity. You are the observer of the identity. Therefore, if you observe something different, the identity changes. So you have to start changing the way that you see things, right? Which means you need to start changing the way that you see yourself and understand that you're not just lying to yourself, telling yourself that you are something that you aren't already. These aspects of you are just lying dormant. They're just waiting for you to look at them, waiting for you to give them attention, waiting for you to prioritize those aspects of yourself over the constant worrying and doubting and reinforcing the limited belief systems of the old self. Once you recognize that it's okay to put those belief systems away, it's okay to allow them to exist in the reality from whence they came. And you decide that I'm just gonna shift to the reality where I already know who I am, where I feel fully embodied in who I am, where I know that it's easy to feel this way and it's easy to be this person because I've always been this person here in this reality because I am new self. And with new self comes new beliefs, new ways of being, new ways of speaking, acting, experiencing your reality. And that is a shift that happens instantaneously once you accept that awareness of being. So no matter what that old self says, no matter what the old man says, no matter what that limited conception of yourself was, no matter what happened in the past, no matter the experiences, the stories, the drama of the 3D reality, that whole entire past, you can contain it, you can put it into a little ball so you can look at it and say, here are my limiting beliefs, here's what happened, da -da 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 -da. if you feel like you need to do the work on it, do the work on it. Nobody's telling you you can't do that. If it's giving you that feeling of discord within you, if you're feeling resistance to these feelings, you can recognize immediately that they're not self. That's your emotional guidance system telling you that you are identifying with something that is not in alignment with the true highest version of yourself, with seeing yourself in an ideal state, in an ideal identity. So all those feelings, all those beliefs, all those assumptions that are in alignment with that old awareness, you can just take them out. You can just look at them and just automatically label them as false, label them as not true. So those belief systems have to stay in the reality with the old version of yourself. You're gonna shift to the reality of the new version of yourself who understands that you've always been a goddess. You've always been this person who deserves to be taken care of, who deserves to be loved unconditionally, who deserves to be treated with respect catered to and loved and who is being pursued, not the pursuer, not the chaser, not the go out and doer, not I have to make this happen or I have to make this person love me or I have to make somebody see me as a person who I don't see myself as. I have to present myself in a certain way because if I don't, then people are going to think this thing about me or if I don't do this, this thing is going to happen to me. Still thinking that the outside can do anything other than what you have already done inside. The outside is beneficial for you. If you wanna do anything in the 3D, like change the way you look, alter yourself physically, whether you're manifesting it or you're doing something like putting on makeup, doing self care, changing your hair, whatever you're doing in the 3D is to support that new image of yourself, that new self concept. And it can be helpful because when you look different, you feel different. When you look good, you feel good. But it's understanding that the outside is not what determines the truth of you. The inside of you determines the truth of you. And no matter how you look on the outside, if you're projecting that image of yourself, if you see yourself already in that awareness, then everybody else is going to see you that way too. If you give yourself permission to activate that awareness internally and you say, of course I'm a goddess. I've always been a goddess. I always get what I want. This entire world is catering to my experience. I can do whatever I want, I can be whatever I want, I can have whatever I want, and as soon as I say I have it, it's mine. When you have that mindset of like, not a determined like, I'm gonna go make this happen, I'm gonna be the fixer, 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 or the efforter, or the doer, in your divine feminine energy, in your goddess energy, you sit back and receive. 
you relax into this awareness. This is not an awareness that you force yourself into or you try to make yourself believe into. This is just something you recognize and accept. This is just something you see. You see yourself in the mirror and you automatically see the truth of you. Regardless of what this is saying, regardless of what this is saying, you see the truth because you know. You don't have to make yourself believe something you know. You don't have to try to be something that you already are. You don't have to try to be something that you already are, right? That's why the ultimate self-concept part is so important. Because once you realize that you're the only cause that this entire experience of reality is based on your awareness of being, on that I am, you can't blame anything outside for the way that you're being treated, for your relationship, for circumstances that are happening to you, whether they're favorable or unfavorable. You can't blame or give credit to anything outside of you. Everything started from within. So if I say I'm the disempowered version of myself, I'm the version of myself who doesn't feel like I'm worth being loved or worth being cared for or worth somebody's time or being prioritized. If you see yourself that way, then that's the only story that can be reflected to you. That's the only thing you're gonna be able to perceive in your reality because you have blinders on. It's not that things aren't there. It's just that you're not allowing yourself to see it. And understanding that, understanding that awareness means you completely disengage. You completely stop seeing what's happening out here as facts. You stop seeing this, this body even as facts. And you know that all the facts come from inside. They come from in here. Recognizing this, remembering who you truly are, automatically implies that you are no longer the victim to anything. And I also wanna make it clear that when I get into more of this tough love, like it really is this way, whether or not you choose to accept it is your choice. But if you don't accept it, you're gonna keep experiencing the old reality until you do accept it. Some people like that part doesn't click for them. I'm never saying it to be harsh. I'm saying it because I love you. I'm saying it because I'm not here to just give you fluff, to make you feel good for the sake of making you feel good while you're watching the video. And then you go off into reality and you're flailing and you're wavering and you don't know what to do about yourself. Even though we are this limitless self-concept, we are this all-powerful, divine, magical being at the core of ourselves does not mean that we don't leave space for the human experience because we're here, we're in bodies, we're playing these avatars and we've created this little game for ourselves, which is sometimes very convincing. And we have emotions for a reason. That's your emotional guidance system, right? We talked about that a little bit. If you're feeling fear, if you're feeling doubt, that's an automatic signal that you are not aligning with the version of yourself that you truly wanna be. So in order to shift through that, the solution is to start aligning with the version of yourself that you wanna be. Start telling yourself you are this person to do whatever techniques or methods you want to do in order to solidify that or saturate yourself in that or to support that knowing or to just make a firm decision with a lot of fucking conviction that it is this way, it's always been this way, it's always gonna be this way, this is just the truth of things. When you do that and you don't go back, that is instant manifestation. It automatically shifts you into the reality of that being the truth. It automatically shifts you to the reality where your desire is manifested. So when you're not seeing it, it's because you're either going back and forth or because you're not in a state of dominance. You're not dominantly feeling like that version of yourself. Maybe you feel like that sometimes, or maybe you feel like it feels good to think about that version of you, but you're not thinking from that version of you. And you don't have to be perfect about this. This is not the perfection Olympics. Manifestation is not a competition. I don't care what you're manifesting, how you're manifesting it, what your belief system are as long as at the core you know that it's you creating it's you choosing as long as you're cool with that as long as you're not blaming anybody else for whatever manifests as a product of your assumptions i don't really care what you do that's for you to choose and for you to decide but i am here to tell you the true reality of the situation the reality of you your true power and that if you've allowed that to be lying dormant or if you've given it away to other people who have given you these limiting belief systems and you've internalized them, it's time to take your power back. It's time to return to the knowing of who you truly are. So we can understand doubt. We can understand having human emotions. We can understand a little bit of wavering or can I really get here? Or this feels like a little bit of a stretch, especially if the shift from old you to new you is seemingly large. There might be some, whoa, this doesn't feel quite real yet. And that doesn't mean you can't manifest it. There might be some, I don't fully believe this yet. It doesn't mean you still can't manifest it. It is your job to continually return because it is your choice. Because the choices are continue in the current reality or keep choosing into the new one until the new one hardens into fact. Keep persisting in the new knowing, keep telling yourself that you know this to be true, even if it's not currently true in your 3D reality, then it will harden into fact. You'll see it externally as the way you see it internally, but the internal seeing comes first. That's the thought that you should persist in, whether or not your body feels safe with that 
that knowing now because until you persist in the story until you familiarize yourself with it and get yourself comfortable it might feel a little bit scary because the old version of you is dying to those belief systems that death is scary they feel abandoned they feel like they're losing their livelihood because they get it from you they get it from your attention your focus the energy that you're feeding to them so when you stop feeding these belief systems when you start starving them out when you say actually i'm not going to doubt that actually i'm not going to doubt my good actually i'm not going to waver on this actually i'm going to put my foot down and have a firm conviction that this is the way that i say it is no matter what maybe at first the belief systems go am i really this person am i really a goddess do i really deserve to be treated this way do i really deserve all these good things like isn't this too much for me what if i have these things and then i lose them or what if i'm actually not as good as i thought i was what if sp doesn't actually accept me or spends enough time with me and then realizes that I'm not actually what they want. What if I'm not enough? What if I'm not enough? And you just see those belief systems and you say, okay, old version, I understand that you think that's the truth of your reality and you are totally okay to keep thinking that's the truth of your reality. But I am choosing to be a new version of myself that understands that that truth no longer applies to me. So have fun in your reality with those shitty beliefs, with that version of me, I don't know her. I don't perceive her. I don't see her because I'm gonna keep making this choice. The choice that I want, the choice that feels aligned with my new truth. Here's another thing I wanna add on to that. If you're still feeling like, how do I even go about stepping into a version of me who's capable of having this abundant mindset of being a woman who's gorgeous, being a woman who's constantly complimented, who's seen as the ideal, who is objectively in her queen energy, who knows who she is, who feels confident, who feels secure and knows she gets to have everything she wants. When you see this version of yourself, the ideal version of yourself, the version with the goddess energy activated, maybe you see her, but you still don't feel like you can be her. But if you don't think about it as I have to pretend to be this version or I have to try to become this version and you think about it like a suit, like the suit you wear, it's just like the identity suit that you're wearing now. It's just a different version. So if you have to think about it as playing pretend, then go ahead and suit her up. Go ahead and see her. See that ideal version of yourself, even if you feel separated from it and say, I'm gonna step in your shoes. I'm gonna play as you, and I'm just gonna allow you to take over this being, take over this vessel. I'm just gonna put the suit on and you operate for me. I'm gonna step into this version of myself as an alter ego. This is pretty much embodying the state, but sometimes seeing it from a different perspective and taking a little bit of the pressure off of it and being like, this is fun, this is playful, this is a game, makes it a lot easier to just fully step into and embody that energy. It makes it something that you want to constantly return to because you realize how good it feels to step up and show up as a more authentic version of yourself, as a version of yourself who you really wanna be. And that version exists and can fully be you. But first, you have to start getting comfortable with that version of yourself. So think about it as your alter ego. Give her a name if you want and say, today I'm showing up as my alter ego. Or when I take this phone call, I'm gonna speak and I'm gonna talk and I'm gonna react like the alter ego version of me. I'm gonna let her handle this thing because this version of me who has her goddess complex activated knows exactly how to handle this situation. She knows what to say. Her beliefs are on point. She can handle this situation so much better than the old limited version of me. So I'm gonna step into her real quick. I'm gonna put on her shoes or I'm gonna suit up and I'm gonna let her take over for a minute, take over the reins, and I'm gonna practice being her. I'm gonna practice showing up as her. By doing that, you are starting to embody the state. You are getting comfortable and familiar with that energy and you're getting your body prepared to fully step into that and fully see yourself as that. And let's remember that being dominantly in the state just means 51%. So if you spend 1% more of your time in your alter ego than in that old limited version of yourself, then the old limited version of yourself actually becomes the alter ego and the alter ego becomes the real version of yourself. And the further you can push yourself on that side of the spectrum, the easier it's gonna be for you to return there instead of back to the old self-concept because it's gonna feel good, because it's gonna feel fun and empowering and playful. And that energy is so much more fulfilling than feeling like you're not capable, like you're not worthy, like you're not a woman who just gets what she wants on autopilot. If you're thinking about yourself as a goddess, how do goddesses get treated? Goddesses are brought offerings. Goddesses are adorned. Goddesses are revered and in a sense worshiped. Truly in your reality, you are the operant power. You are at the top of the totem pole. Everybody around you and everything that you experience needs to be based on that awareness. You need to be catered to, you need to be taken care of. It's just a known obvious product of being in that energy of being a goddess. Another way to think about this is, is your energy an invitation 
for these experiences. Whether you're changing your self-concept because you wanna manifest an SP or just because you wanna feel better about yourself for your general well-being, if you wanna manifest an appearance or a health change, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is the energy that I'm embodying or the things that I am assuming, implying that I am open and inviting for these experiences. If they come up, if they show up in my reality, am I gonna be the version of myself that's able to accept them? Or am I gonna be the one who pushes it away because I think that's too much for me, I'm not good enough for that, I've never had this before so I can never have this, it's never been this way for me so I don't even understand what's going on here so I'm just gonna push it away because that's too much, that is scary, we don't do that here. If you're seeing yourself as that version of yourself but still trying to get yourself to believe that you are the other version, that's where that energetic discord comes from, that's where that uncomfy resistance feeling comes from. It comes from trying to see yourself as something that you believe that you're not instead of just knowing that you already are that thing and reinforcing that awareness because it's the truth. So be an invitation. Make yourself open to seeing yourself the way that you want to be seen. And if you don't necessarily know what goddess energy implies for you yet, think about the things that you want to experience. Step into that alter ego and start thinking about what kind of life does she live? How does she look? How do people treat her? How do people speak to her? How does she talk? How do people feel in her presence? Are people attentive when she speaks? Do people value her words, her understanding, her insight? Do people come to her with more problems, more complaints, more no, sorry, you can't have this? Or is it more love, more joy, more acceptance, compassion with an energy of willingness to give her whatever the fuck she asked for? Because a goddess doesn't justify, oh, I can have this thing because this, because I'm this person or because I worked hard for it or because I have these credentials. If you are truly in that state, if you're really in that energy, if you really see yourself that way, what needs to be justified? If I asked for it, it's mine because it's mine and that's it. I don't need to logic my way into figuring out why this is possible, how it's gonna happen, how it's gonna get done. I just know that I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna be receptive and I know that it's gonna show up because that's what I assume is gonna happen because that's what always happens for me. So truly think about when you're cultivating this new version of yourself that you can step into right now, Think about when you sit in that energy, when you think about the life that she's living, the way that she's feeling dominantly, does that energy feel like an invitation for your good? An invitation for things are always working out for me, things are just getting better and better, I'm always getting what I want, I feel safe, I feel supported, I feel taken care of, I feel prioritized, I feel like what I have to say is important, the things that I do are important and I'm praised and recognized for just my energy, not my efforts, not what I've done for others, not necessarily anything that I could achieve that is tangible. I'm not just the products of my achievements or my life experiences. I am innately and inherently worthy of the things that I want just because of the way that I'm showing up, just because of my energy, just because I am the invitation to that experience. Whatever way you choose to go about it, whatever being a goddess or feeling like a goddess implies to you, Understand that your self-concept, it's like your own little art project. And nobody's telling you how you can paint this canvas. Nobody's telling you what colors to use. Nobody's telling you that you can't paint over the canvas or wipe the slate clean and try again. Whatever that means for you moving forward, step into that knowing that it is the truth and knowing that you are setting the standard and you are upholding those expectations, those boundaries, and assuming that nothing happens in your reality unless it's to that end. Everything is from this point on now culminating to that end for your good to be a further activation of that divine feminine goddess energy. All right, my loves, that's gonna do it for me today. I intend this message serves you well and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments. If you're interested in working with me or checking out what I'm doing on other platforms, all that information will be in the description box below. Another big thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. A link for up to 25% off on their Valentine's Day self love sale will also be in the description box. You don't wanna miss out. You deserve to treat yourself. So all the information for that will be in the description box as well. And other than that, of course, I love you all so much. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.